it wasn't really that much of an impact here then. What it was over here was that the things like the cars, Joe Jackson and stuff were really what started the whole quote unquote new wave in America. And it's not really until now that uh, the pistols are really starting to make an impact on the, the kids around, you know, with the uh, whole, whole punk idea. And through the pistols, they listen to things like the Dead Kennedys, Black Flag. A lot of the LA bands are starting to make a big like at my store. Besides the the things like the Flock of Seagulls, the Ants, Duran Duran, the Span Down, the whole thing. The big thing right now is is the hardcore, Dead Kennedys, Black Flag. As soon as I get the shipment in, they're flying out the door. And with the hardcore people, it's just ripped up clothes, ripped up shirts, and you know, just put on. An, a Black Flag album, have a couple of beers and bang your head, you know? If they don't have a name for it, they call it New Wave or Punk, if it sounds shitty. <laughs> As a club manager, when I open a club and I have, an, you know, a band, and I start seeing people come th through the door with all kinds of things through their cheeks and spiked hair, and, you know, I start to worry because these people really, a lot of times, act absurd. I think that's probably, you know, what's in. They act absurd and they're a real hassle for management. You know, they run into walls and they fall on the floor and stuff, and it's just a hassle. I mean, you know, you're the, the lawsuits you could have if these people felt anything, you know, but their nervous systems are like, uh, you know, on the same level as uh, some type of liver fluke. You get dressed up like Rod Stewart, dye your hair, stick a sock in your pants, and you rock and roll. And here I remember walking up the fast lane one time, I think the Ramones were playing, I see a kid come sailing out the door onto the street. Um, he had, was in the club, he just... <laughs> He just whipped it out and peed on somebody's leg. And the one time someone taps Eric on the shoulder, he turns around, they whack him in the face with a blackjack. Well, that's <laughs> happening, man. That's, that's happening. That was part Come of the, on, you know. Man, that's happening. Eric yeah. loved that. He, I love it. That made him, you know, real that fond of new love, wave music. That makes me love punkers, man. I love that. You never know when you're going to get stuck or beat. When yeah, it comes to the bar business, I'd rather have right next because they drink good bourbon. They pay a lot of money. And new wavers come in and ask you, can I have a cup of water, please? Eric may not like it, but punk, especially the hardcore variety, does seem to be rearing its ugly head in parts of America. But it is very much a minority interest, as I realized when I went down to my old high school. Punk? 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 You mean like punk rockers? Yeah. Punk, punk rockers? rockers. They're, they're, I don't like them, really. I don't know. I like more of the rock and roll. In fact, I found that punk is such a non-starter amongst the, the kids at the high school that these kids have an annual fancy dress punk day. I asked them if there were any punk groups they do like. Yeah! yeah. 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 Adam and Adam and American kids that are into punk aren't necessarily 24-hour um, 20, punk rockers. The thing is that people in America want to party and dress up to fit the occasion. If we went to England, yeah. if we went to England we'd probably look funny over there. Got it. Yeah. They'd laugh at us. So, yeah. The way we're dressed right now, do we look funny to kids? You look more conservative than people. Yeah, yeah, that's what we are. It's slowly but surely, I think it's going to flow over here. Like I said, we're a little bit behind, but what can you do? You know, there's not that much in America to rave about to start our own thing. And yet, how ironic that American musicians like Iggy Pop, Lou Reed, Patti Smith, Debbie Harry, and the Ramones were such an essential part of the early growth of punk in this country. On the subject of punk in Britain and people with nervous systems like liver flukes, we now go to Steve for a chat with sounds journalist Gary Bushell. Thanks very much, mate. From time to time, the musical press seems to create whole new batches of musical categories which seemingly exist to puzzle and bemuse their readers, setting up a whole new series of alternatives to identify with or not as the case may be. Well, one of the newest to emerge is new wave punk although personally I didn't really know it had been away. So here to suffer the slings and arrows and all that stuff is Mr. Gary Bushell, features editor of Sounds, and two members of the Manchester band Blitz, who I'm told are the forerunners of the movement. Well, firstly, Gary, new wave punk. Where did it come from? Was it your front room or somewhere, or where? No, I mean, everyone's saying about the music press creating trends, but I think for the last three years, <coughs> the music press has tried to destroy what punk was. They tried to say it had gone. In fact, it hadn't gone. I mean. Uh, lots of bands all over the country were keeping it alive, like the UK Subs, the Angelic Upstarts, uh, Cockney Rejects. And now the, um, the actual pressure's built up from the grassroots so much that people can't ignore what's happening. Right, I mean, how do you justify the supposed political involvement? I mean, I'm quoting you here, I have a quote right in front of me, which says, uh, the gutter press which indulges in scummy miscoverage. I mean, how can you justify the political involvement if that's happening? Well, there is, I mean, in, it is political with small p, because, I mean, you're talking about a, a whole generation of people where 
uh, a quarter of the population live under the poverty line. You're talking about uh, millions of people on the dole. And the people who form punk bands now tend to be those sort of people. So obviously they're against the establishment, obviously they're against unemployment. So that's the political element of it, yeah. Sure, okay, but uh, taking it as the, let's take it as, as the old wave of 77 almost, um, I don't know if you'd agree with that, but politically then, uh, musically, how does this new wave differ from that? Is it all that different? Musically, uh, not all, I mean, it tends to be a lot harder, a lot faster, uh, but actually socially it's actually this new wave now is what the first wave pretended to be i mean the first wave was all art students pretending to be off the dole and now this this wave is people off the dole not pretending at all but telling the truth right i got you okay if i may make quite again i've got some categories here within the, the whole category of what we're talking about street socialist punk anti-political herberts um which is a great one a skunk rock or a new punk nazi skinned redskins uh, now and the Blitz have been described as the nabobs of Yobrock, which is a wonderful <laughs> phrase. Um, could one of you please describe Yobrock? No, that's his idea. Is that we don't know what it means. This is one of Mr. Bush's uh, phrases, right? Yeah. Uh, Yobrock, but I don't know what nabobs is. Okay, <laughs> nabob, I believe. I mean, what, what category are you guys in? Uh, just a punk band, really. Uh, so, I mean, how do you regard the new wave of punk? Do you regard yourself as part of this? Yeah, yeah. of course I do, yeah. So, and and how, does that, how does that align with, with the old wave of 77? How are you different? Uh, a lot we're working class, they were all middle class. That was all sort of big fashion thing then. Right. The fashion element's sort of gone out of it now and it's more to do with music. It's more what it should have been. Okay, I mean, out of that 77 wave, you had the blonde, Blondie and the Stranglers maybe, <laughs> who later went on to become, let's face it, top of the popsters. I yeah. mean, what's yeah. to prevent Blitz not doing that? What's going to stop you? Are you going to stop it? Yeah, no. You want, want to do, do Top of Pops, yeah, of course we do. You would? There's nothing against doing it. That's not against your morals That's or your, your principles or whatever? All them bands in 77, they said they didn't want to be rich. Right. And the next minute they were going around in limousines. Right? Sure. Well, anybody who says they don't want to be rich is either a liar or a bleeding idiot. Gotcha. Okay. Right? Right, I, want to, okay. I do want to be sorry, Rich. We'll, we'll go and stop at Pops. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Right, gents, thanks very much. I'm sure this could go on for hours. Um, <laughs> Perhaps not. Many thanks, Sidney. <laughs> and over to you, Nicky.